Good day everyone. For today, we are going to talk about taking charge of one's health in understanding the self. And we're going to discuss various factors to consider when taking care of yourself, particularly of your mental health, in order for us to be able to raise awareness and in order for you to be able to develop strategies in order for you to cope with stress. So let us begin. Before we proceed with our discussion, let me start by talking about and trying to answer these guide questions. The first guide question is, can stress mold character? Okay, and maybe you've heard of people who have been through adversity. You've heard of people who had the most stressful life experiences. You've heard of people who were able to conquer various life experiences and without those experiences they wouldn't be where they are right now okay so i do believe that although stress is something that is defined negatively being able to conquer stress and being able to to cope with it and being able to become a better person out of a stressful experience is very helpful in molding a resilient personality okay and a lot of negative events may happen to you, okay? And it's important for us mental health professionals to assist people into developing coping skills and to develop greater acceptance with what happened with their life. And we don't focus on the negativity of the event, but rather we focus on the positive things or the positive, um, what did you learn? From the event that happened to you okay that's why there are people in in my college thesis I remember we interview we surveyed people with disabilities and they said that they are actually more thankful that they acquired the disability because their disability allows them to be able to be more appreciative of what's happening around them because they think of it as their second life and without that experience perhaps they don't they won't be that great grateful with their life so that's how i can say that stress can mold character however stress can mold us in a different way there are people who may not be able to cope with stress that's why they resort to other coping mechanisms that are not that are not prescribed by mental health professionals that's why there are people who cope with stress for example with gambling or with drugs with substances okay which is not healthy after all that's why we need to correct the way that you handle stress so that we mold the right character with the right values so how do filipinos deal with stress sourced from the social and political environment and I would say that this is not something unique to the Filipino community but resilience is a universal resource okay it's it is something that all of us will be able to develop eventually that's why we are being trained to be more patient and to be more um, to be more optimistic but we do not endorse toxic positivity so what we want to learn is that we Filipinos are very resilient but we don't want to, sh to demonstrate toxic positivity. Meaning, we don't want Filipinos to close their eyes on the negative things happening around them. We don't want Filipinos to force themselves to feel happy. Okay, because in, here in the Philippines, you will be praised if you are smiling in the midst of adversity. Okay, however, one danger of such behavior is that if you're forcing yourself to be happy because i know that there are people who are really happy but if you're forcing yourself to be happy in the midst of adversity then that may not be the right emotion for that okay it's also important to know that emotions are triggered by certain events and it is all it is normal for you to display a certain emotion to a certain event Okay, and we don't want people to, to force themselves to feel happy just because they want to look like 
they are resilient. Okay, but rather, we want people to be able to process their emotion and for them to be able to understand what it means and for them to develop great or helpful coping skills. Now, before we look at some coping skills that I want you to learn, first I want you to understand that not all types of stress are bad. Okay? When we say stress, it's not something that is that should be viewed as something negative all the time because like what I told you earlier, stress molds character. Okay? And whenever you feel stress, I want you to be aware which le which type of stress am I feeling right now? Okay? Because there are two major types of stress, you stress and distress. When we say you stress, that is a positive kind of stress. And when we say distress, that's a negative type of stress. In order for you to understand what that means, look at the picture on the lower right side of our slide. So at first, when you don't feel any kind of stress, then you are calm. Sometimes you are bored. That's why you look for something to do. Then eventually, you will get excited. But when you are now doing what you have to do, you start to feel the stress. Okay? And the first kind of stress that you feel is perhaps you stress. And when you feel you stress, you are, be you are being challenged, you feel focused, and you feel energized. Like what I told you in our other discussion about goal setting, we have the tendency to look for a new goal and to set higher goals as we continue to challenge ourselves, particularly if you have a growth mindset. However, we should be careful as parents, as teachers, or as mentors that we don't set very, very difficult goals because eventually, prolonged exposure to, to stress will result to what we call distress. And when you are now distressed, you feel fatigue, exhaustion, and burnout. So our goal is for, is for us to challenge your capabilities, for you to feel focused, and for you to be energized in what we do. But we don't want you to feel burnout. Okay? And there are a lot of people at work who feel burnout. And I guess that is also true in schooling. When we say that you're feeling burnout, you're no longer happy with what you do. In the case of those who work, they no longer want to find they no longer want to go to work. They don't find any meaning with their work. And they only want to when they when they go to work, they only want the day to end so that they can rest. Because they have been exposed to stress for an extended period of time. What I want you to know is that it is healthy to keep an optimal level of stress and that should be in the use stress instead of distress. Okay? And from time to time you also need to calm down and just to relax and compose yourself in order for you to physically and psychologically recover for the next set of challenges that you're going to um, that you're going to face and overcome eventually. Okay, so before we look at the various coping mechanisms that I want you to learn, I want to clarify that stress is not the same with trauma. Okay? Because as a mental health professional, this is very important for me. I always hear people using stress and trauma interchangeably. However, we shouldn't do that because stress is not the same with trauma, okay? And we don't want people to label this ex their experience as trauma when in fact it's just stress, okay? There are people who would say that if they had a hard time going to work or going to, to school, they've been traumatized. However, that's not trauma but rather that's stress. We don't want to change the definition of trauma we don't want to misguide people about the meaning of trauma okay we want to be responsible in 
using these words. Okay? Let me define it. Stress is just a natural reaction. It can be physical or psychological reaction to a stressor. When we say a stressor, these are the things that trigger stress. Okay? Stressors can be good or bad. It can make you cope in a positive way or it can make you engage in bad coping behavior. Say, for example, a type of stressor can be failing in an exam, um, being anxious in your work, okay, or difficulties in the family or in a relationship, financial problems, and even life transition is also an example of a stressor. For example, it is also considered that graduating from college or being married, they're also considered as possible stressors because there are people who may have difficulties in adjusting to their new life after these life transitions. Since maybe they need to be, they need some professional help when it comes to learning important coping skills. Okay? So if, if things go out of hand, if you experience stress and then you lack the right coping skills to deal with them, it wouldn't hurt to seek professional help. Okay? And that's where, we're, where we are going to come in. Okay? But on the other hand, when we say trauma, this is something that is far greater compared to stress and you don't want to experience trauma because this is something that may result to a lot of psychological disturbances. Okay? And you can only say that someone is, has been traumatized if he or she experienced either of either um, one of these three or perhaps all of them okay so let's take a look at them these are serious physical injury death or near death experience or sexual violation hence the only people who can label the, the, their experience as traumatizing are those who have been into war those who almost died those who were almost killed those who had a near death accident those who were almost raped or those who were raped, those who were molested. So they exper they really experienced trauma and because of that experience, they may develop a psychological disorder. Okay, and it's important for us to identify these individuals because it's hard to cope with such stressors. Okay, with such traumatizing experiences. And we need to refer them to mental health professionals because what if they develop anxiety or depression symptoms after the event okay and we don't want that to happen I am taking part in a research right now and the research um, the research topic is about online sexual abuse and exploitation of children a lot of them has been exposed to a Tra to a traumatizing experience and because of that we um they need to seek professional help they need counseling or they need psychotherapy however not all parents are aware that they experience that they experience a psychological trauma that's why they are not referring them to a professional that's why it's, it's very important to educate people about about psychological stressors and psychological traumatic um, psychological trauma so that the right interventions can be given okay now let's talk about stress okay i'm not going to discuss about trauma anymore in this slide that's for another day i want to focus more on stress and how we can help people cope with stress and this picture is it is borrowed from the internet and it's very helpful in explaining stress to everyone okay so look at this experiencing stress is just like filling up a pail or a bucket of water then with more stress that you experience then the more that you reach the limit okay so what are the various types of stressors that we have this can be environmental, for example, problems with your housemates. It can be academic, especially for students, and it can also be interpersonal. Okay, and there are more types of stressors that are not included here in this slide. And it would be healthy if you were going to identify them in your mind right now. Okay, so if 
if our mind or our body is like a bucket being filled with stress, then how can we decrease the level of stress? Or in this image, the level of water. Okay, that's the that's the our illustration for stress. How can we reduce it? So look at these. There are faucets down here and the at the bottom, and the, their la their label is coping skills. Hence, if you have the right coping skills, then you'll be able to maintain a healthy level of stress. You don't want to be highly stressed because if you're highly stressed, then your psychological well-being is at risk. However, the more stress we experience, sometimes we feel that our coping mechanisms doesn't work. That's why there are people who resort to what we call unhealthy coping. Okay, however, unlike healthy coping, imagine this. If you use unhealthy coping, just imagine that this faucet goes back, transports water back into the pail. So you just feel that you're feeling better, but in reality, you're not. Okay, you're just giving birth to more problems. For example, because of family problems, you resort to drugs or you resort to gambling. You just feel happy when you gamble. However, what if you, you now have gambling problems? Okay, you feel happy at first, but you don't realize that things are getting out of hand. Okay, so we want people to engage in coping mechanisms, but not unhealthy, but rather healthy coping skills. And why is it that we want to maintain a healthy le level of stress? okay see this limit right here okay if we reach this limit then we may not know anymore how are we going to handle the situation perhaps you're going to feel that you're no longer in control in some illustrations they would say that if you reach this certain limit here then you are at risk of developing psychological disorder or mental illness Hence, we don't want people to be exposed to highly stressful situations because that may be the trigger to a certain mental health problem. Okay? And just remember when things go out of hand and if you feel as if your coping mechanisms are no longer working, it's time to see, uh, it's time to seek psychological help. Okay? And there's not, nothing negative in doing so. Okay? It's not something unhealthy, but rather it's a healthy way for you to feel better. Okay, it's psychological health is not something that will make you, it's not only for those with mental illness, but rather psychological intervention, ideally, is for everyone. If you seek psychological help, it doesn't mean that you automatically have a mental disorder. Okay? So now, let's proceed. Here are some examples of, of coping and some of them may be negative. Okay? So I borrowed this ad another picture from the internet. For example, what if there are people who engage in smoking? Okay? In a bad way. I know that for some, smoking is part of their day-to-day -day lives. However, what if you become a chain smoker because of your stress? Okay? Some would engage in sexual behaviors, some would isolate themselves, some would binge eat. There are a lot of examples here. Some would go for excessive online shopping, some would go drinking or take drugs, okay? Some would even sleep for more than 13 hours a day, okay? That's why one recommendation is that you must have a trusted buddy or a friend who's going to check on you every now and then. Okay, and in case you're, in case that you become aware that your friend is engaging in such disruptive behaviors, then perhaps it's time to, to tell that friend that his or her coping skills are not working and he or she is in need to develop um, better or healthier coping mechanisms. According to one theory, 
here is how we handle stress or here is the here are the two steps in stress response the first step is what we call primary appraisal or in primary appraisal what we do is that we figure out the event so what is happening is there something dangerous is there something threatening do i need to do something immediately okay is there something that what should be my response fight or flight or freeze okay when we say fight then you're going to fight back for example you can fight with stressors such as for example stress in schools you choose to fight back by studying harder or that can literally be fighting back for example what if the stressor is is that there's an animal chasing you so that's a part of primary appraisal or you can do also do flight when we say flight that may be avoiding the the negative situation or freeze that's why some people when they are when you when a criminal is pointing a gun at them their immediate response is neither fight or flight but rather they freeze okay so we first we appraise the event so what does this mean okay is this positive or negative threatening dangerous or is it safe then if it's stressful if it's dangerous if it's fear provoking or anxiety provoking we do a secondary appraisal or what we do in secondary appraisal is that we assess the resources to handle the stressor and when we say resources guys this refers to your characteristics that will help you handle stress okay so now think about it what are your personal characteristics that you know will be helpful if you are going to feel stress i know i have resilient students out there i know there are students out there who are going to say that they openly talk to their friends okay and right now what i'm going to show is that here's a good list of personal resources that i want you to be aware of these are resilience efficacy remember our discussion about goal setting are you efficacious do you feel that you can do it okay do you believe in yourself and we also have grit when we say grit that is about being persevering being determined okay that is very important both in school and at work remember it's not intelligence that predicts success but rather it's great also we have gratitude what if you're feeling financial stress or what if all you do is count your problems all day then you might benefit from a gratitude activity remember one of the stories i shared to you before I had a professor who taught his kids how to pray at night by engaging in a gratitude prayer. So what is it that you're thankful for and say it to God? Okay? And also we have hope. Okay? Hope is hope is related to optimism. Okay? Having a positive outlook in life. And the growth mindset. So here are just some of the of the resources that you can have okay or the character strengths okay according to positive psychology or another theory in, in psychology so there are also what we call there's also what we call psychological capital okay we can have financial capital different kinds of capital but here in psychology there is such thing as psychological capital and the, and the four that are considered to be the four psychological capital are hope efficacy resilience and optimism also known as hero what they are saying is that if schools and if companies will invest in mental health then a lot of good things will happen so if you can invest on money if you can invest on machinery you can invest on materials you can also invest in psychological health okay so here are some things that characterizes a stressor so what makes it a stressor the first one is the unpredictability of the event for example um, death in the family or death um, with, of someone close to you is something that is not predictable hence it is a stressor okay it is something that th you did not expect to happen other than that these stressors may also be intense okay something that something that you not did not expect to be that big for example um accidents or disasters these are intense events 
other than that some stressors are not controllable it is not beyond it's not within your control but rather it's beyond your control okay for example if um for example um disasters are not something that we control and sometimes we feel that we fail to protect our loved ones but in reality we cannot have predicted something like that and it is not something that we can control ahead of time and other than that these stress stressors cause different types of pressure and we are pressured um, and we don't know how to react to these situations but remember that these stressors will resolve will result to certain emotions and remember that negative emotions are normal responses to abnormal events and don't feel bad for feeling that way during these events because it is normal to feel um, to feel um, sad it is normal to feel bad but we, you need to be able to manage those emotions so that these emotions will not turn into unhealthy emotions or these emotions will not cause disturbances in areas of functioning such as school work relationships etc so you need um you need to be conscious about these emotions and you need to know that these are temporary emotions and eventually they will pass and you need to make use of your personal resources in order for you to cope okay so don't feel bad if you're feeling sad if you're feeling um disappointed because these are normal responses to abnormal events Okay, so here are some various signs of stress. First is emotional, okay? The person may be anxious or apathetic. When we say apathy or apathetic, the person doesn't show interest in things. He doesn't have any plans. It seems like he doesn't care. He's not, he's not doing that because he doesn't really care, but rather the person is apathetic because he or she is highly stressed. So you must be, you must understand his or her circumstances okay and understanding the emotions that the person is displaying or he may be irritable or fatigued mentally other than that behavioral signs in include avoidance self-destructive behaviors or self-harming behaviors self-neglect meaning it is evident that the person is no longer taking care of himself or herself and they exhibit poor judgment they may be impulsive or they they don't think about what they're doing okay so it's important to calm them down first again let them take their time provide them water food if they need to do so if they need so or um, let them rest for a while and physically they might be ill okay because of the stress that they're feeling or exhausted or they may be self-medicating and then you will discover that in the first place it is the medicines that this person is taking is not prescribed to him that's why he is self-medicating or ab abusing or overusing medicines and there may also be physical or ailments complaints so psychological stress will not only manifest psychologically but it will also be evident physically and be aware of these various red flags okay in order for you to identify someone as stress so what you can do when you feel stress or what can you um, how can you help your friends who are who are stressed? So the first is that what you can do is ask the person to slow down and just to relax and to try some breathing exercises, just to breathe in and to breathe out in certain situations and and help the person relax because like what I told you in our previous discussion, if you are emotionally unstable, then you're more likely to do um, to make bad decisions. Other than that, you can also help the person organize and prioritize. Like, if the person has a lot of problems, then which of these can we deal with first? Which can be, we, how can we organize this, these problems? Okay? How can we, what should we prioritize? Okay? And in the long run, okay, this is not an immediate answer, but something that you should be doing for quite some time. You need to live a healthy life physically and mentally and believe it or not physical exercise also improves mental health especially for those who isolate themselves in their room if you want them to feel better or you want them you want to help them recover perhaps it's helpful to to join them join them in exercising or just to ask them to go outside for a walk if they're willing to do so okay because that's helpful other than that, 
you should they should also recognize and accept limitations so know the limitations of your capabilities and do not set outrageous goals do not set goals that are beyond your control okay so do not make um do not blame yourselves for things that you don't have control over with so do not stress yourself too much that there are people that you cannot help okay because this is beyond your control you don't know their circumstances what's important is for you to do little things that are within your control okay and these smaller goals will eventually help you realize that even though you're performing little things in the long run that's already a lot okay and when if you need more help then there's nothing wrong with seeking social support it's important to identify the source of social support okay so if that's a psychological concern then you need a mental health professional if that is a spiritual concern then someone then you need the help from from clergy okay you need help from ministers okay and you need to seek help from professionals and not from quack doctors or from people who are not trained with what they're doing okay and lastly you need to write it down journaling really helps and it allows you to realize that there are behaviors that you do that you did if you didn't want to do in the first place if you write them down then you will be conscious that there are things that that you don't want to do anymore and journaling will allow you to keep track if you are living a healthy life okay so let me share with you some hobbies that you can that you can pursue okay it just depends which of them would be um, doable in your situation so that can be reading drawing music movie etc okay other than that you can go for running going for a walk visiting a park swimming okay calling a friend hanging out with friends contacting family members okay and that can also be um, helping a neighbor okay helping out your friends okay so basically doing things that make you feel better okay doing things instead of isolating yourself you do things that can make you um, feel better by helping others or feel better about yourself because you have done something productive instead of engaging in in unhealthy coping behaviors such as gambling or using drugs or or other risky behaviors that you want that we don't want you to engage in okay so one more thing that i want you to learn from this discussion is that certain events trigger emotions because of our thoughts and you don't want your thoughts to hinder or you don't want your thoughts to lead to negative emotions that's why sometimes it's not the event itself that causes the bad emotion but rather it's the thought okay so so you need to be conscious how do i think in certain situations so that i can avoid negative emotions in a healthy way okay because there are instances wherein it's healthy to feel negative emotions so look at this for example if you got if you get stuck in traffic and then you think that you're going to be late then that will cause anxiety but if you think that but if you think that why do i always get stuck behind stupid drivers that's already beyond your control okay and that causes frustration so you see the way that person a thinks in comparison to person b makes them experience different emotions look at person c i have a good excuse for missing the boring meeting so let's just forget that he said the boring meeting but rather um well, how can we say this in a healthier way for example in a healthier way you can say this as um it is understandable if i will be late because I got stuck in traffic and this doesn't happen every day this only happened today because there's a construction and no one was informed about this and that will give you an emotion of relief okay so different events result in different emotions but not directly but rather they um they are processed first at the mind and what we think affects the way we feel okay so try to think in a healthy manner so that the emotions that you feel will be healthy as well okay so here are some examples of 
how do we change unhelpful thoughts? For example, when you fail, then you would say it's unfair. Okay, and that makes you feel angry. And sometimes anger is healthy. However, being vengeful or seeking revenge is not. Okay, so we don't want to experience too much anger to the point that we want to be vengeful to others. That's why we try to change the thoughts instead of saying it's unfair. We could say something like this could have happened to anyone, but this time it just happened to me. And sometimes bad things happen to good people. And because of those thinking, um, you would feel realistic. You would be more understanding, that's accepting, and be more reasonable. Other than that, there are instances wherein we say that it's their fault this happened and we become uh, angry, frustrated, vengeful, we accuse others and we don't trust others anymore. So we don't want to engage in the blame game. So we have the person realize blaming doesn't change the situation or others may be to blame but I need to focus on myself and my family and that makes you more accepting and more hopeful. You see, the way that you see things or the way that you think will help you feel better okay so don't engage in in behaviors that are and don't engage in thinking that will make you engage in negative behavior so do not self-harm do not think that that the world hates you or do not think that this is happening because of you okay let's look at some other examples for example uh, a person may say, I should be coping better. Why am I still stuck in here? So that makes you feel helpless. However, we can rephrase that as, the fact that I got here today proves that I'm coping a bit. Okay, and talking to a counselor helps me feel better. And most people would have trouble after an event like this. So it's completely normal to feel like this. So that makes you feel more hopeful. Other than that, Instead of saying my reactions mean I am going crazy or saying that something must really be wrong with me, we can we can change that into these reactions are temporary and most people will feel this way after a disaster and that will make you feel reassured and capable. Other than that, you may think that only weak people react the way I do or other people are dealing with this better than I do, then you might feel worthless. That's why we want to change the way you think by saying that most people react this way for a while and my reaction reflects how big this event was, not how weak I am. Okay, and because of that you will feel stronger. Okay, so I want you to use these um, techniques that I, that I told you about. I want you, so at the end of the day, it's our thoughts that make us feel better or make us feel worse. Okay, and do not try to control everything because there are things that are really beyond your control and do not make a person feel bad for experiencing a negative emotion but rather um, show empathy, show compassion, and be more understanding. And as a closing message in this discussion about mental health and taking care of the self, I want you to remember that do not self-diagnose. Do not self-medicate and seek professional help. Alright, so that is it for this discussion. I hope that you learned a lot and I hope that you spread these learnings to other people, especially those who are going to need um, who are going to need more tips, more strategies in handling stressful situations. So thank you for listening in this discussion. I hope you learned a lot from this discussion as well as in this course. So that's it and thank you.